A very, very warm welcome back to Attingham Park for episode 19 with me, Mr. Sealy P. We're back on Attingham. I think I start every single episode on every single map or two saying, we've been busy off camera. <laughs> we have been busy off camera. As you can see, our cedar's looking particularly filthy. Actually, you know what I will do? I wasn't going to, but um, that'll need a bit of maintenance, a bit of work. Um, I have now uh, re-prepped and in, in the case of the grass field prepped and seeded uh, field 30 and 35 35 and 37 let's go with those two numbers until I check the menu again <laughs> now I know a lot of people have been expecting to see the old uh, face cam all the time I kind of mentioned it that if I'm streaming, the face cam works on PlayStation 5. Um, and if I'm editing, you can do an edit, kind of like a voiceover, but with camera, during editing of a video. Um, but it won't let you, when you're just doing normal gameplay, have the camera on. It's not like a PC one. It's a little bit different to that. So there will be certain times you will see it, and other times you won't. Let's check the mappage, shall we? So... Yeah, so field 37 and 35, that was my grass field, or one of my grass fields, the one we started with. That's now got canola in. That's got barley in, because we didn't have a lot of barley, and the canola's dropped below 100,000 litres. <laughs> you know, we're in dire straits, we need more canola. Uh, those two are on soybean, they're not ready to harvest yet, but we're going to move over to field 12 and 3. I've already got the harvester over there with the header, we're ready to go to harvest those. Now in this episode, what we're going to be looking at is the pig food dilemma. Uh, I kind of, I say, I haven't mentioned it in previous episodes. In that, I have been doing fields of different crop types, potatoes and wheat and barley and canola and soybean and sunflower and storing it all. So I've got all the component parts to feed the pigs. I initially bought those things separately um, because I didn't have enough on hand to feed the pigs. So the, the pig food dilemma then becomes this. If I harvest this entire field system, 12 and 3, and I sell all of that soybean, the money I get for that, I spend all of that on pig food, just buying pig food, not the individual component parts, just pig food. How much pig food can I get with the money from those two fields? And if it's a lot, I mean a lot, a lot, I can then sell all the crops I've got in storage and all of these as well. And if I make more money, from selling all the crops I've got in storage and the stuff that was on these fields as well, then I'm better off buying pig food than I am having the component parts. And that's always been the pig's dilemma. Do you do the crops and give them to the pigs? Do you sell the crops and buy pig food? What way round do you go about doing it, you know? So that's what we're going to have a look at. Uh, I keep saying about buying more sheep. I'm having that weird thing as well that when I hop onto maps, I've got... Um, I haven't put any new mods in or anything like that, but my animals seem to be doing that multicoloured thing where I've got, oh no, cows are right today, that's good. But when I was on the sheep, my sheep were all black, um, and when I went on, they were all mixed again. So as you can see, that lovely grass field up to our left, field 35, has now got soybean in. Um, I'm using the Land Rover simply because we want to go past the biogas plant, because what I'm also doing at the moment, I've put a couple of loads in already. All of that silage that was fermenting, or the chaff that was fermenting to silage, or the grass, I mean, it was grass, wasn't it? That's uncovered now, and I'm in the process of sorting it out, so that's all being put in. I've got the milling machine around this side, so I'm going to gradually work my way through that. Now that's fine, apart from the fact I've just done that thing again where I've remembered. I don't have a... You know what, I'm going to buy another Stratman trailer. I know my money's low, but at midnight we'll get paid for all the silage we're selling. And then we can also... Actually, you know what I might do? I can't remember if on here it shows or it doesn't. Let's see if it does. Sorry, I'm being cryptic. My digestate, does it show? 16,234 and climbing. Because um, I've got my slurry yard, so I can sell my digestate. So what I might do is sell a load of digestate and that will cover the cost of buying a new trailer. I've just realised how low my money is. Down to 200,000. Um, yeah, I'm going to do that. 
I'm going to buy another trailer. Or, I'll, you know what, I'm going to buy another trailer anyway. I've got the money to buy it now, and then we can um, just top it up. You know, we're going to make money from the biogas plant, so it's not going to be too much of an issue. While I'm on the drive over, um, I know some people don't like me, you know, when I do bits where I'm just driving from place to place, they want to see more farming, but... And I know a lot of people on their videos or when they do their own gameplay will teleport. Do I teleport on camera? No. That's all I'm going to say. There's lots of things I do off camera that I shouldn't do, that nobody sees. Unless I do it behind the scenes, sometimes I do. Um, so on my drive over, a few things I want to do. One, shout out to Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you for the messages. Thank you. Stay strong, mate. You know who you are. Um, secondly, Andrew, because these sections here that have all gone black. Now, that, according to the, the, the um, what do you call it? The key to the right says that that's all silty clay. Andrew messaged me to say the reason they've all gone black is because the soil samples need to be redone. But I'm pretty sure Field 37 only just did that. Because he said they will last about five harvests or so. Or he's found his samples will last about five harvests. Now, I can't remember how many I've done on 41 and 40. I've done lots of grass harvesting on these two, but they haven't gone black. So what I'm going to do is I will grab the um, soil sampler and I'm going to whiz out to field 41. That's probably had, well, probably the same amount of harvests as field 40. Do a couple of soil samples, because field 42 was only done recently, and I've only done one cut on that. So it could just be this is silty clay. We've just got a big band of silty clay. It would be unusual. Yeah, 12 and 3, I've only done one harvest on those as well. But I will check the theory, because um, it's one of those things that hadn't really crossed my mind. Um, how long do your soil samples last before you need to do new ones? In the real world, do farmers do them just once a year? So they do before harvest, after harvest. I know they get the soil sampling and they get their, all their yield uh, results and they get all the stuff so they can get their their proper precision farming maps for, you know, for your... Um, oh, what's the word for it? I'm having a nightmare today. Oh, I can actually cut across here, can't I? For your application data for putting on all your fertiliser and stuff. I've been watching um, Millennial Farmer the last week having an absolute nightmare because he's trying to do that system where he can put all three of his fertilizers on his anhydrous his what did he say p and k and something else all in one pass rather than three, three separate passes so they've been setting up their machine their tillage machine to do all of that and he was having a nightmare where the fertilizer was working but the anhydrous wasn't he got the anhydrous working but then one of the fertilizer of the meter rolls stopped, then you had some of the rows stopped because they were plugging up because the soil was muddy and soil was muddy, soil is muddy, soil was um, thick like claggy and wet. Um, he's been having an absolute nightmare with it. Um, but yeah, he's been using his, his uh, application rate thing to do that. Anyway, before we get into the harvester then, um, now, a lot of people, a lot of YouTubers I watch will mention their Patreons and they will put a list up at the end of the video thanking all the people that support the channel, that kind of thing. I know every now and again I'll do a shout out and I'll list a load of people. Those people, I always say thank you for your generosity. Most of those people are people that um, monthly will be helping the channel out, which is fantastic. Some people it's one off and again, can't thank you all enough. Um, I've got quite a few to thank today. So, uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart, honestly I mean this, from Peter, Theo, David, Robert, Sergio, Andrew, John, another Peter, Faris, another David, Jeffrey, Tony and Greg. Now if your name's not on there, it may be that I read your name out in the previous lot, you know, because it's a kind of rolling thing. Thank you to all of you for your continued support. Um, and I've said this before, watching the videos is support. You know, I, I can't thank people enough. We just went over 80,000 subscribers recently. That blows my mind. I, honestly, I might, I might as well get on with this while I'm talking about it as well. Um, it, honestly, it blows my mind. If people want to go on and pick up a bit of merch, you know, it doesn't have to be anything expensive at all. Pick up a sticker, pick up a mug, pick up, you know, whatever you, you want to. But you, again, you don't have to. Just you being here, just watching the videos, just supporting the channel in that way, 
is enough. It, you know, my only goal, my only goal at the moment is to hit 100,000 subscribers. It's the only goal I've got. And it's a goal I never had when I first started the channel. I didn't really have a goal. My goal was just, let's make a channel and see what happens kind of thing. And then when things started to happen, it was like, wow, what if I can get to 100 subscribers? And it was, I wonder if I can get to 1,000. And then, you know, and now my only goal is, I have no visions of getting to 500,000. I have no, you know, DJ's gone, just blown up. I mean, his channel's gone mad and it's phenomenal. I, it's fantastic to see. I have no visions of ever hitting like Dagawin levels of, you know, I'm never going to be a 500,000 subscriber channel that, you know, but then again, you just don't know. But all I've got my target set on is 100,000. That's all I want to do. And my kids keep saying, oh, dad, you know, you'll get it. I just want to have that plaque on the wall. And it's that kind of, is it vilification? It's just that kind of thing of saying, I did that, you know, look what I did. I achieved that. I don't know. It's just, it's just one of those weird things you set yourself a target don't you and off you go so yeah thank you to all those people thank you for your kindness thank you for your generosity thank you for all the kind words thank you for all the comments thank you know i don't go through the comments as often as i used to but i still go through them i think sometimes as i say twice a week now it used to be every day i would try and do them but the problem was i was finding i was spending a couple of hours doing that when i should have been making videos and so i kind of set myself aside an admin day uh, same with my Facebook comments. If you do put a Facebook messenger comment, a direct message, I do get to them, I will get to them. Apologies if it's not immediate. If you're expecting a kind of um, call centre response thing, I know some people will ask me a question and then within an hour they'll put a question mark. I, there's, I, there's no way I'm going to respond in an hour. I, apologies. Sometimes I do but it's very rare um, and if you're waiting for an immediate response on something that's that important I, I, I can only apologise Twitter is a little bit easier to deal with um, and with regard to comments on there and something that was mentioned the other day was Instagram do I do do I use my Instagram account I do have an Instagram account I do use it every now and again um, I used it a little bit when I go away on holiday more when I was finding tractors and machinery and gear and I would take pictures and post those to Facebook and Twitter and then Instagram. That was kind of, I, I'm not a daily Instagrammer. I know a lot of people are, but that's not something I generally do. Um, but it's something I'm working on. But in other news, for FS22 coming out, yesterday I rented my Natrado server. Never done that before. I'm hoping it's all going to work. <laughs> So hopefully when FS22 drops, and I don't know when the first one will be, but we are going to be looking at doing some multiplayer games. That's the plan. Um, no, header, lift, turn. There we go. Um, so we're going to be looking at doing some multiplayer. That's the plan. So I did rent my server yesterday. So it should be in place and good to go. Uh, what day of the week it will be I need to try and fix a day that if, if and when we do it it's going to be a regular thing and I'm also trying to work out the best way to go about it from talking to other YouTubers it has been suggested that I do um, memberships, like channel memberships which I haven't done before so you can become a, a channel member and one of the perks of that is you can join multiplayer games when I do them. Now I've only done a server for 16 players, which on console is way more than usual. And because of the cross-play nature of FS22, that's that's Notrado are now doing servers not just for PC but for Xbox and PlayStation and stuff as well. So I've set it up for 16 players, um, and it'll be one of those things of if you get on, you can get on. But so I might do one for Discord members. I might do one for. Oh, we might do it for the Discord anyway. I'm trying to work out the logistics, having never done it before. Um, I'm not a noob to the game, but I'm a bit of a noob to all the multiplayer stuff and running servers and that kind of thing. So we'll see how that all pans out, but I have got my server now. We shall see. So we might have a multiplayer day. Hump day multiplayer, maybe on a Wednesday or something. I don't know. It's just an idea at the moment. But we'll see how that all pans out. 
so yeah plans i've got plans moving forward i've got plans for the channel i think i kind of was just i'm just very happy i'm, I'm not looking for stellar growth i'm not looking for i mean yeah it would be phenomenal if all of a sudden i got a hundred thousand subscribers on top of what i've already got if everyone suddenly went mad and my channel just blew that yeah of course it would be phenomenal i'm happy with that slow and steady gradual you know building and building and building i like that but i think in that doing that i've got a probably a bit complacent i'm, I'm kind of doing my day to day i'm plodding along and doing my thing which is what i do um and i've kind of forgotten or yeah i'm not i suppose i'm not your archetypal youtuber i guess i'm not that i'm not a, i'm not that kind of thirsty and i'm not i'm not in any way what's the phrase these young'uns use the youths atting i'm not atting anybody that's it um I'm, I'm not atting anybody in the farming simulator community not at all i'm talking more in the broader youtube community there are a few youtubers i watch who are guilty of this at at the moment and I have also been told categorically by other YouTubers that this is perfectly okay. What do you think in the comments? What do you think? Um, I'm not thirsty. I'm not clickbaity. I'm not, uh, that's not me. I'm, I'm just, you know, yeah, sometimes you put up a title that's a bit sort of sensational or it might be over highlighting something you're doing in your video. But I've never done what I would consider clickbait, you know. When people do that whole, that's it, I'm not making videos anymore. And you watch it and go, well, not for this week anyway. So, oh, give me a break, you know. Or there'll be something weird and something peculiar. That's not me. I've, I've never really, you know. So I guess I'm not your archetypal tuber. Please don't use the phrase influencer. <laughs> you know how I feel about that and artisan. <laughs> Imagine being an artisan influencer. <laughs> That chills me to my very core. Right, anyway, I've done enough talking about things that are coming up and the shout-outs and thank yous and all that kind of thing. Yield is looking okay. I was hoping it was going to be more. I don't know what soybeans going for at the moment. I haven't really checked. But like I say, whatever we get... Actually, what I might do... I haven't used the silo here yet, have I? Of course I haven't. Somebody said I'd be very pleased with that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to buy the new trailer, grab a tractor, we'll open that silo up because I want to see why, why I'm going to be pleased with that. It might be all the different things it holds. Anything off this field we'll store in there and then we'll sell it from there. Assuming, of course, there's not anything already in it. I don't think there is. That's quite a big field, actually, isn't it, when you think about it. I did extend it a fair bit. And then we'll see just how much pig food we can get. And if it's a lot, I mean, a lot, a lot, I don't think it's going to be catastrophically high amounts. Then maybe we can sell some of the other crops as well and make a bit of the money back. I don't know. It's, it's all, you know, it's an idea anyway. Tell John Deere's looking a bit, a bit filthy, isn't it, really? off to the yard we go to pick up our new trailer uh, the harvester is now full uh, i have actually just yes, before i forget um andrew i did do some more soil samples uh, it doesn't show anything here i've done a spot sample here and a spot sample on here and they both come back exactly the same they've been re sent back both still saying silty clay and i'll show you if i go across the ph you can see where i did them both now weirdly just by doing the soil samples my ph levels changed how and if i go into there so is my nitrogen how has my nitrogen level changed by doing soil samples that doesn't make any sense whatsoever i'm very confused but anyway so i did them and like i say if we go back then to soil type soil types just the same they're black because it's silty clay uh, maybe on um maybe they do go black after a period of time um, I haven't got to that point yet, but thank you for pointing out. It's something I hadn't really thought about, something I didn't really even consider in all honesty. So what we're going to do now is hook that up. Uh, I want to put that down, just in case I do any silage work and all that. It's always handy to have it down. 
and then we'll go and empty the harvester and then we'll go to the silo we'll check out the silo situation so I'm not sure also I've got this weird thing I noticed and I'm oh, oh, sorry so that random thing I was thinking of the noise from the tractor because I know this tractor is quite loud um, and it's something I've again it's a PlayStation 5 thing it's, it's a a quirk it might be a setting I'm missing or doing something wrong but I have my headphones my um, I've got Elite Atlas headphones with mic built in right so I plugged it into my PlayStation controller which I did on my PS4 and obviously it records my voice fantastic well the actual PlayStation controller PS5 controller has a mic in it as well and there's a button you can press that turns that mic off so if I'm doing some filming and I'm not talking, but I don't want any background noise in, I'll often press that button, because if people are talking in the house or there's, you know, something's going on, then it doesn't record any mic from the controller, which is great. I tried to do that with the headset on and press that, so okay, if I've got the headset on, it'll record the mic from the headset, but I don't want the mic on the controller working, and I didn't get any sound at all. But the weird thing I'm finding is, on certain games when I'm playing them, I'm getting feedback, so I get something will happen on the screen more when I've been playing Far Cry and stuff like that but on here if I do the horn or something like that, I don't know if I can do it now, it will do it now to me that's normal horn sound but what I'm finding is the horn will come out of the TV the sound and the mic on the controller picks up the horn sound so you get this like echo and I can't I just can't for life me it's a weird thing I suppose a lot of people would say then what you need to do is put your sound from your TV through your heads, headphones rather than out loud. And that's something I've never done. And I suppose I should do really because I know people do that a lot because it's more immersive and you get that real feel, you know, you're really right there in it. But I've, I've got this real thing, this phobia. It's all coming out today, isn't it? I've got this phobia um, ever since I was a postman. And when I was a postman, I used to do my deliveries all over the place, and I always used to wear headphones. I, you know, started off back in the days, back in the day of a Walkman, and then that then went on to um, I had a mini disc player. That was before um, iPods and things were. Uh, I mean, they were available, but they weren't cheap. And. Um, I had, I had boxes and boxes of mini discs for my mini disc player because so I thought that was the that was the new thing. It was like the old um, VHS Betamax thing, and mini disc didn't really go anywhere because I think um, solid state technology came on so quickly off the back of it, iPods and stuff. And obviously now phones hold so much and music and that kind of thing it wasn't relevant anymore. Um, and I've lost my thread where I was going. <laughs> oh, no, I've done it again. <sighs> Oh, listen to music, I remember now, yeah. So when I was on deliveries, I used to listen to music. Now, I also had a little, it was a tiny little radio. And you plugged your headphones into it, tuned it into the radio stations. I used to listen to the morning radio, you know, all the time. Loved it. However, when the clocks changed in the winter, and you would start your delivery as a postman fairly early in the morning, and it would be pitch black. So I'd have a head torch. I'd be out, off I'd go. I couldn't wear headphones. I just couldn't wear headphones in the dark. I was always terrified of someone coming up behind me or something happening behind me or just not hearing cars. Or When it's light, your your vision takes on a lot of that role because you can kind of quickly look around, you can scan about. You know, I'm, I've always been terrified of that kind of, you know, is it just me? Is that a thing? Um, so when I started gaming, the, the whole... I've done it a couple of times where I've had all of the sound coming through the headphones and I don't like it. I, I don't like... Yeah. <laughs> oh dear me, what's the matter with me? Anyway, I'm going to get the worker set off and we're going to sort out this... Um... Sorry, I know, I'm doing a lot of just... Everything's pouring out, I don't know why. Oh, that was the other thing as well. <clears throat> Slight retraction. I have posted a Far Cry video today, and I'm likely to post more. Don't know when, don't know how many. Um, the outcry for me to continue doing them and make more of them 
was so much more than the pe the people that said they didn't like me doing them. I did that kind of panic thing of, oh no, people are going to hate me, you know, people don't like what I'm doing, you know, and 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 I think it's that it's always been that part of me um, that wants to please everybody. I know I can't. And more people came back and said, look, make more. We were enjoying them. It's something a bit different. It's great to watch. And you know, more people said that than said, don't like this. You know, I had a few people say they were going to unsubscribe and stuff. And all I can say is, I think I did it on the start of the Far Cry video, a little bit, of, a little bit to camera. Everyone can vote with their feet. Of course they can. And with any YouTube content anywhere from anybody, you can watch it or not watch it. No one's forcing you to watch any of it. If you only want to watch my farming simulator stuff, then then watch my farming simulator stuff. If you only like my farming simulator stuff and then you watch my Far Cry stuff and you're offended or annoyed by what I've done, I know it sounds a bit harsh, I'm not going to be like that, but that you've made that decision. If you don't want to watch my Far Cry stuff and you only like my, my farming stuff, it seems a bit mad to me to watch the Far Cry stuff and then be annoyed about it. I, you know, I don't know. I, like I say, I don't, I'm not a controversial person. But I just thought I'd point that out. You don't have to watch it. Of course you don't. If you only like me for the, for the farming simulator stuff, and then that's fine. <laughs> of course it is. I need to get to a point I can get a worker going. Once I get a worker going... Actually, we might be all right now. Right then, let's do this, shall we? Let's see what all the what's going on with the. Oh, sorry, what all the fuss is about. No, let's see what's going on with this silo, shall we? Why am I going to be pleasantly surprised? And that'll be a case of me finishing off the field, seeing what we've got. Selling it all. Actually, when we get to the silo, I need to double check. Mind you, I've still got to finish the harvest yet, but just how much. Oh, we already opened it. When did I open that? I was going to say I need to open it. How much is soybean selling for at the moment? Hopefully, it's going to be a good price, but you never know. Uh, Sunrise Bakery, 1728. Oh, that's not bad, is it? The old watermill, 1805. I haven't been out there yet. I think that's where we're going to take it. Uh, this, the point of sale that I had at the caravan park, holiday park, has gone. I had to remove it. Didn't have the proper license in and all that kind of stuff. But we are going to put a new one out at the garden centre type DVO. Um, so what we'll do is let's unload into there. And then we'll check and see. So, like I say, everything coming off that field will come into this silo, so it's completely separate from everything else. Let me know what's there. Let's just shift over a little bit and let's see what's occurring, shall we? Oh, so we have got stuff in here wheat, barley, oats, canola, sunflower. Oh, that's a lot of sunflower. Soybean we just put in there, plus we already had a fair bit in there already. Why is that 508,000 litres? That's odd. Got some corn, potatoes, sugar beet, sugar cane, total mix ration, chaff, what? Wood chip, silage, grass, hay, straw. So it's a multi fruit. Pig food, onion, carrot. No, is that. Hmm. Now, has that always been like that? That can't be because I placed the multi fruit one over. There, can it? Oh, that's fantastic. If I'd have known that right from the word go, I could have stored everything in here, couldn't I? That's good. Oh, no, the only problem we have got is it's not a drive round, is it? No. Oh, okay, we'll have to back up. Well, what I might do, actually, we might do a bit of, um, might do a bit of landscaping. Oh, no, there's a tree stump there. I wonder if I can take those tree stumps out. I'll say, if I put a track around the back there, that would work, wouldn't it? Maybe we need to get the stump grinder out, see if I can do that. Do a bit of landscaping. I shall get onto that. Forthwith, I need to check on my um, silage selling at the biogas plant as well, just keep on top of everything. We're now a two trailer family.
field is done. We are harvest complete. There's 22,980 litres in here. The rest has been going into the silo, as you've just seen. I've done a bit of work, a bit of landscaping around the silo, so we can have a bit of a drive round situation. Got a bit of wood chip from that, not a huge amount, but we probably will sell that. What I'm going to do is put this into the silo first, and then we'll see what we've got in here. There was about 20,000, was it, was it 20,000 litres? Something like that in here already, wasn't it? Because we put in our full load and it was saying 40,000 litres, I'm sure it was. But anyway, I'm going to sell whatever's in here. It, you know, I've got two more fields of soybean to harvest, so 20,000 litres, what's, what's that amongst friends? So let's go to our soybean. 115,948 litres we have got to sell. That's not bad. Um, I'm going to take it to the old grain mill because that's where the best price is at the moment, although it is starting to drop. 1,802, sorry, the old water mill. That is starting to drop, but that's the best price. Oh, no, but oh, I have still got my sell point. I thought, I, I, thought, I thought we'd got rid of that. So everything in this silo I'm going to take and I'm going to sell. We're sitting at 130,513. I've made a note of that. So anything over and above. Oh, this works out very well. Could have just gone across the grass. Of course I could, but... In the immortal world, words of millennial farmer, that would get very sloppy. So we don't want that in the winter months. A bit of concrete. Never, I say never to do any harm, I suppose, depends on thing getting concrete boots and through you in a river at some point. Let's get our beacon on, let's drive out there and we'll sell it all. And then every penny, and I mean every penny, we're going to buy pig food. Now they're going to be the pig food pallets from Quiet Hitman, 4,200 litres, we're going to get the double stacked ones. Uh, I'm not sure how much they are for the double stacked ones, but we'll get as many as we can. I've got a funny feeling it's going to be all this, it's going to be quite sorry, my bad. It's going to be quite a lot. This is a bit wide for the main roads, isn't it? A little bit. Are we going to get through those uh, narrow sections up here? Okay. I'll see you there in just a second. Fine, and we don't need any road signs. We might have to cut the curb. I think we can cut the curb. Apologies to any pedestrians. in that yard, isn't it? But it doesn't matter. Like I say, we'll get what we can get. We'll see what it equates to. Uh, that's... Oh, sweet potatoes the other side. So it is this one. Oh, that's alright. Not a bad price, if, if I do so, so, so myself. We have got so much in storage, so this is, this is my point. 93,680 for the first load. I'm going to spend a bit of time now emptying that silo completely. I'll work out what we made over and above the 130 grand we had in storage already. And then we'll buy the pallets. Um, because, it, yeah, it's that kind of... If it is... I mean, cost-wise, thinking about it, the relationship between loose material... I'm looking at the relationship between loose material and buying just pig food. I think buying those other pallets that I bought when I did that whole big delivery, that is by far the best method for cost. 5,000 litres for a £1,000. That, that price-wise, you can't beat that. So you can get all the constituent parts for your, to feed your pigs really cheaply. It's, that's, it's not so much about the cost with this, there is a cost implication, but for ease of use, I can either um, 
me I can take a trailer load of each thing and put it in and I've, I've paid very little for it or doing just pig food pallets it's just one load it's just pig food mixed so whilst the other way may be cheaper and you'll get more more bang for your buck so to speak this way buying pig food already pre-mixed saves a bit of time and hassle I get out here it's like all of it it just comes down to what you're prepared to do what do you want to do do as you rather do it your own crops you've done it yourself I'm still growing the crops I've, I've still done all the constituent parts I'm just selling those to buy pig food rather than feeding the pigs directly on those like I say it's been it's been the ongoing pig food dilemma for you know, since pigs were a thing This is going to get interesting <laughs> and a bit bonkers as well. I bought the telehandler over and I've leased a uh, big bag handler. I think I've got one elsewhere. I just it's here at the yard. It's not too expensive, right? So all the soy being sold from that field. I know that like I said there's a little bit extra in there. It's not horrendous. Three hundred thirty-nine thousand two hundred seventy-seven. Take off the hundred thirty thousand five hundred thirteen we had originally. We made two hundred eight thousand seven hundred sixty-four. So, if we go into our pallets, yeah, we want pallets. These are the ones that I used last time. And my mind has gone blank as to what they were called. I have got them written down somewhere. It's in my list, isn't it, of equipment. Farm supply pack by the Lort. So, like I say, 1,000 for 5,000 litres. So, price-wise, that's fantastic, but it's all still separate ingredients. If we carry on across to the Quiet Hitman... And we have got our premium pig food, which is just there. So 4,200 litres if we go for the larger ones. So at the moment it's 2,100. We're going to go, we'll leave it on, we'll go that wrap, I think. Standard or double. So we're going to bulk, so 4,200 litres, 2,550. Where did I go wrong last time then? Because I could have sworn that said 2,000. Because you can go just potatoes if you want to do potato pallets you can that actually works out quite handy uh, for a seed option if you're going to be seeding like planting potatoes you can buy these pallets to fill up your seeders if you want to go down that route you absolutely can so you want those double yeah I could just want this. anyway regardless so 2550 will buy me 4200 liters of pig food so what I've got to do now is keep buying until my money comes down to 130,000 <laughs> Um, <laughs> I've got a funny feeling <laughs> we're going to have quite a few pallets and then I have to count them all and work out how many litres we got or what um, yeah, I'll, I'll work out some way around doing it it's going to be a lot isn't it uh, and I'm going to have to shuffle them all around stack them up, pile them up, put them wherever I can in the yard because I will run out of space at some point so um, this is another one of those I'll see you in a bit when we have a fairly full yard of pallets hopefully we won't get too much lag we might do um i'm not going to load these onto a trailer these will be loaded into a, a trailer loose right so let's see what we've got so far <laughs> so each time <laughs> oh what am i doing okay so each time we do this then we're gonna have uh one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That's rather helpful. Twenty pallets of four thousand two hundred litres each. So that's going to be eighty-four thousand litres. Is that right? Ten pallets of four thousand two hundred would be forty-two thousand. So that's eighty-four thousand litres. <laughs> Ah, okay, right, so yeah, I need to move these out of the way then, and then I can get the next slot in, and the next slot in, and we'll get our money down to 130,000, and see what it looks like. Tee -hee -hee. Why do I do this to myself? I do wonder sometimes what is going through my mind. Um, I wonder if I can just push them together, just try and work out a way to make it easier for me to move all these. I 
don't know what the horsepower to move many, but. Go on, keep going. I think we're almost out of oomph. Okay. That's alright. Can I do two at a time, or is it going to do that thing where the pallets want to flick all over the world, up into the atmosphere? Please stay sensible. No! No! Oh. I'll just push you along the ground. Let's, please be good. Please be nice. Don't make me regret doing this. <laughs> Maybe this should have been the thumbnail. <laughs> it's just all these pallets. Oh, okay. Note to yourself, don't lift off the ground and they won't go bonkers. They might still go bonkers. Sometime later. Huh. You know what? It's funny how sometimes you just can't make things up. We had 130,513. Then we sold all the soybean. We had a load of money to spend. I said I'd get it as close. We're down to 130,519. So only £6 off, engine off. We have got... <laughs> it's like one of those situations, you know, like when you, you, you misorder something. You turn up at the yard and say, I only ordered 20 pallets. No, mate, you ordered 200. It's that kind of... <laughs> Um, we've got 82, 82 double stacked pallets for our money. That's three rows of 20 there. <laughs> we've got 20 there and two there. That totals 344,400 litres of pig food. And that was from one soybean harvest off of one field. And I've been stockpiling all those crops to feed the pigs. If I sold all of those and bought just pig food, because that's all been set aside to feed the pigs, just think how, how much pig food I would have. Now I've got the unenviable task now of loading this all into trailers and storing it. I'm going to store some here at uh, Malthouse Farm and some at Brompton, because I've got the pigs there, and then the overspill from the pigs there are going to come up to here, so I'm going to need some pig food up here. Um... Now, there is, there is the pig food trading system available as well by Holger, St Holger Sengstock. And I did the similar sort of thing on Sussex Farms. And I don't think these pallets, I don't think the Quiet Hitman pallets were out then. Because that worked out, you could go to a silo and buy it loose, fill up a trailer. That worked out the cheapest option at the time. I don't know if this is cheaper or not. I haven't, that would be a whole separate test I would need to do. But it kind of, you know... Again, like I say, it, it may answer a question, it may not answer a question. You may still be adamant, well, I'm going to do it this way, or actually, you know what, I'm going to have the cheapest option, I'm going to have the easiest option. It depends how you want to go about it. But just that one soybean crop has got me 344,400 litres of pig food, rather than storing the soybean away and feeding it to the pigs as we go. However you want to go about it. It's entirely up to you, really. Um... But that's where we're at. That's where I think we're going to leave it. Yeah, I can't look at it all. <laughs> but on PS5, I'm experiencing zero lag on this. I thought, obviously, each, each of these pallets is going to be using up slots as well. So it's that thing of, you know what, I want to get them loaded loose as quickly as possible. Now, could I do this, picking them up and load them in with the... Th yeah, I could do with the telehandler. It's going to take me ages, no matter, no matter how I go about doing this, really. I suppose while I was doing that, maybe... Oh, the trouble is, I've got that... It does have that tendency to... The pallets flick all over the place. Will it do it if I lift it up? It should do, shouldn't it? So it takes them quicker, I might be better off doing that. Just whether or not I can do multiple without them, like say, going into orbit. I've seen it on one... Still, don't want to close enough together. 
come on. This may cut abruptly, so I'm going to stop here and say, <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please give us a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.